Hi, everybody. Today, we are talking about the relation between linear systems and matrices. In the previous video, we introduced the theory of linear systems. You can find the link in the description below. Now, let's take a system of n linear equations and m variables x1, x2, and so on until xm. We would like to describe the system in terms of matrices. And in this video, we are going to see two ways how to do it. The first is the following. We observe that the previous system can be expressed as the product of the matrix of all the pink coefficients, Aij, which multiplies the matrix of the variables x1, x2, and so on until xm. And we ask the result to be equal to the column vector of the constant coefficients, b1, b2, and so on, until bn. Here, we color them in green. The first is a n times m matrix. The second is a m times one matrix. Then, of course, the result will be a n times one matrix. So what we wrote makes sense, but that's not sufficient. Let's verify that if we multiply the first two matrices, we really obtain the equations of our system. So the first pink row times the blue column gives the equation A11, X1, plus A12, X2, and so on, until A1, M, Xm equal to B1. Let's go on. We have the same for the second line. A21, X1, plus A22, X2, and so on, until A2, M, Xm, equal to B2. Now we do a big jump until the last column and we obtain AN1 X1 plus AN2 X2 and so on until ANM XM, which is equal to BN. And it's exactly the last equation of our system. Let's summarize. We call A the matrix whose entries are given by the coefficients A, I, J. Small m, the matrix of the m variables. And finally, we call small b the matrix of the constant green terms from ba to bn. Then the previous equality between matrices can be written as ax equal to b. And this, from now on, will often denote a linear system. Alternatively, if we want to use an even shorter notation, then we can summarize all the data in a single matrix, which we will call the augmented matrix of the system or simply the augmented matrix. To the left, we write the pink coefficients Aij. To the right, we write the green constant terms, B1, B2, and so on. The vertical line between the pink coefficients and the green ones is not really necessary, but it helps us remember that the origin of the left and right sides is a bit different. In some sense, to the left of the vertical line, we find the left-hand side of the equations of the system, while to the right of the vertical line, we find the right-hand side of the equations of the system. We are now showing how to reconstruct a system once we know the augmented matrix. But before we proceed, let me remind you that this particular example will be discussed and solved in the next video, where the importance of using matrices in order to solve a linear system will then be extremely clear. This augmented matrix is made by the entries 1, 1, 1, and then 2, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and then 0 in green, 2, minus 1, 1, 2, minus 2 in green, 0, 1, 4, 2, and 0 in green. Now, the associated system is then 1x plus 1y plus 1z plus 1w equal to 2. 1x plus minus 1y plus 1z plus minus 1w equal to 0 is the second equation. Third equation, 2x plus minus 1y plus 1z plus 2w equal to minus 2. And finally, 0x plus 
one y plus four z plus two w equal to zero. Those are the four equations. Then we can simplify a bit the notations, where of course zero times x in the last equation will disappear, or whenever we have one times x, we can simply write x and so on. In summary, we have a bijection between linear systems and augmented matrices. For this reason, we can transport the three operations on the equations of a system that we studied in the previous video to the laws of a matrix. Remember, those three operations are not affecting the solution of the system. Let's see them. Interchanging two rows, again, this is the easiest of the three operations. However, just notice that the two matrices now are very different matrices, but the associated systems will have the same set of solutions. The second says that if we multiply a row, the whole of it for a scalar alpha different from zero, again, this will not affect the set of the solutions of the system. Here, we are multiplying the second one by alpha which we are assuming to be non-zero. The last property is the most complicated. We replace one row with the sum of itself plus a multiple of the second one. Here, for example, we replace the first row with the sum of the first row plus alpha times the second one. This is why we have two plus alpha times one, then three plus alpha times minus one, and on the right side of the vertical line, minus one plus alpha times seven. In summary, first row plus alpha times second row. I hope you remember the augmented matrix with four lines and five columns that we saw a couple of minutes ago, because this is what we are going to study in the next video. So that's it for today, but stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much again. Bye.